Well, Tesla did just release some new information regarding their autopilot system. Autopilot and full self-driving are both achieved by a number of systems in the car and it does include utilizing all the cameras on the car as well as a radar. There are of course sensors all around the car that do help the car achieve all these activities that it's trying to accomplish on its own. There is no doubt about it that Tesla's autopilot system and their full self-driving suite are safer than a human. But with that said, of course there are limitations. Now we're finding out something new today and in a twist of events, Tesla actually released some information which seems pretty basic, but at Tesla we almost never get official notes from Tesla when they make changes. This new change though is a little bit more significant and Tesla did take it upon themselves to release some information. So today we're gonna to talk about what's coming and it seems like this is effective immediately. So if you have an order in for a Model 3 or a Model Y, this does affect you. So Tesla has been very vocal lately about their transition to a vision only based autopilot system. So it sounds like there's been a lot of progress made in there and while that's good, the bad news is they have decided that now is the time to move away from having radar on the car altogether. So what does this mean exactly? Well, there's a few things that you need to be aware of. This rollout is going to be effective starting with made deliveries of Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys. If you have already taken delivery, this does not impact you. However, if you've been a sign of VIN but you have not yet taken delivery, be on the lookout for communications from Tesla because they are going to be notifying customers who have not yet taken delivery whether or not they're impacted. Again, that's for people who already have a VIN number. For anybody else that doesn't have a VIN number, you are very likely going to be impacted by this given the fact that there is zero inventory in the entire country. So with this update, Tesla is now going to rely solely on the cameras of the car to achieve all of these functions that happen in autopilot and in full self-driving. So radar systems have been added in vehicles for quite some time now. And the nice thing about having a radar system in the car is it can very accurately tell distances and a closing speed between two vehicles. So as an example, if somebody in front of you slams on their brakes, the car is able to tell how quickly you are approaching and is able to apply the appropriate amount of braking force to stop your car from making an impact. This system, although not 100% flawless, it is very accurate and it has been the benchmark for quite some time now. With lack of that radar system, the car is now going to be utilizing the cameras. And there's no doubt that Tesla has made the most progress in vision systems in these cars when it relates to autopilot functions, including emergency braking. That said, a camera is not able to tell distance to the same level of accuracy that a radar system is. A lot of that has to be manually put into the code to figure out exactly how far you are and to learn how to tell what kind of distance you have and the closing speed. Because of this, there are some obvious shortcomings to rolling this out across the entire fleet. And Tesla has made the decision that they're going to make this rollout for Tesla Model 3s and Ys for the North American market only. So that would include our friends north of the border in Canada. For all the rest of you, for all other markets outside of North America, you will continue to receive a radar equipped Model 3 and Model Y. I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Phantom Wallet. Phantom Wallet offers premium wallet designs with an aluminum chassis with options of wood, leather, and carbon fiber finishes. Grab the cards you need with a quick flip of the lever, RFID and NFC protection are built in, ensuring a safe and secure alternative to traditional options. Make sure to use code BTG to save 10% on your order. In addition, we're learning that the Model S and Model X will continue to receive radar systems in those cars as well, at least for the short term. Tesla does have a goal to transition all vehicles to this vision only system in the very near future. Tesla is going to be utilizing the volume of cars here in the North American market to help test and figure out how to finalize the coding requirements and how to fine tune this system for full rollout across the entire globe. So with that, there are actually some benefits to having a vision only system. Number one, it's less complex. In addition, you don't have to install radar systems in all these cars. Given the current shortage of electronics, this could actually help with a supply chain issue that could potentially be in place, although that's not been confirmed. But with that said, obviously having a radar system, at least today, is far superior to not having a radar system. 
As a matter of fact, Subaru used to launch cars with a vision-based system, and whenever there was inclement weather, it was pretty bad. I actually had the opportunity to drive a Subaru that had this equipment in it, and I do recall being stuck in some pretty bad weather, and it did not work very well. Now with that, we're learning that Tesla is going to be launching this and there are going to be some limitations to some standard features in the car, including some features should you pay for full self-driving. So let's start with the features that are autopilot only cars. So if you just buy your car, you do not pay for full self-driving, there are some features that are going to be limited at the time of delivery. The first and probably most painful one, depending on your driving situation, is auto steer is going to be limited to 75 miles an hour. You will not be able to have the car in autopilot at 76 or more miles per hour. So if you're planning any road trips and you're planning on taking delivery very soon, this is going to limit how fast you can go. States like Texas that have an 80 mile an hour speed limit, this is gonna be a real problem if you're planning on utilizing autopilot. After all, driving a Tesla in autopilot, it's one of the most amazing things out there. You're not gonna have this capability at least for a short period of time. And Tesla has not specified how long they're going to wait before they open this up further. In addition, the minimum following distance is going to be increased as well. This is an obvious one. If you're going to do this, you need to have additional space to react. This is going to be in place at least for the short term until they get the coding fine-tuned for how these cars will perform with a vision-based system. So what that means is you're not gonna be able to keep that following distance to level one. We don't know exactly if it's gonna be level two or level three, but it will be a much bigger distance than what you would normally be able to achieve. There's also another big one that is gonna be kind of frustrating. Emergency lane departure is going to be deactivated at time of delivery. And again, we don't know exactly how long this is going to be the case, but your car will not automatically adjust itself if it feels it is about to depart its lane. This is a pretty basic safety feature in most equipment packages across most auto manufacturers. This particular feature has been a major improvement in vehicle safety and after you have this feature, it's really hard to not have it in the future. Of course, these systems can be turned on and off depending on your driving style and what you prefer. However, not even having the option to turn it on is going to be a little bit frustrating on the front end. And then finally, there's also a full self-driving capability that's going to be limited at time of delivery, and that's the summon feature. Of course, without radars, it's not gonna be able to accurately determine everything around it, and with the summon feature, it does work in parking lots. So there's a very good chance that a lot of the things around you or even your garage, it's not going to be able to accurately determine distances, at least in the short term. So that feature will not work with your $10,000 full self-driving package. Probably like most of you, this is a little disappointing and radar systems are very good at what they do and having those is a very good system for added safety in the vehicle. I'm very surprised to see that we're moving so abruptly in this direction and it'll be interesting to see long term how this holds out. Now, if Tesla can prove definitively over time that this is absolutely as safe, which is going to be quite a task, then I don't think this is ever coming back. However, I think there's a big challenge here on trying to get a vision system to be as safe as a radar. There are plenty of corner cases that yes come to mind right away things like fog things like rain but in addition i've been on a number of road trips and from time to time cameras can be blocked whether that be the sun or whether that be moisture or what have you that can block the cameras so what happens when those cameras are blocked there's no backup systems on board to help overcome what has just been shut down so in those situations, you just won't have autopilot. So that may not be quite as big of a deal for some of you, but for others, that is gonna be a big deal. So this is something you really need to think about. If you are about to take delivery of a Model Y or a Model 3 in May or June, you are going to be the first people affected by this. You're going to have limited capability in the car and you need to really be prepared for that. This is not the end of the world. Things will get better. They will get these systems fine-tuned and rolled out across the board, reactivating some of these capabilities, including a higher speed on the highway. 
But in the short term, you do need to be aware there are some limitations coming to the new car that you just purchased. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that you heard it here first. If you did indeed enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps out so much. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly, especially when there's breaking news. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.